Bible tells us on John chapter 8. That's the story that we'll be looking at today. John chapter 8. The Bible tells us that that was a beautiful sunny day. Unlike today, you know, today is one of those lazy days, you know, with the little drizzling and the, the little coldish. One is just make you stay inside and just, you know, just stay inside. But that day was one of those beautiful morning days where the birds were singing. It was nice and fresh outside. It was a beautiful and perfect day to win souls. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us that as that day came on, Jesus, who did I say? Jesus. Jesus came now unto the market of the city, came now unto the temple of the city. And as he was there, his disciples sat next to him. And the Bible says that he began to preach. So think about this picture. The Bible says that there was this huge church, picture all nations, but Jesus didn't come to the pulpit. He stayed outside on the steps. And the blessed thing, the blessed thing about Jesus is that he had an included PA system with him at all times. Can you believe it? The Bible says in other stories that he preached to and he fed 5,000 people. Can you imagine preaching for 5,000 people with no microphone? You know, I probably can preach to all of you today without a microphone. But by the end of the day, I'll probably need one day or two days to recover. You know, I used to be a really good screamer. Meaning I had a really loud, nice and loud voice. And everybody knows those testimonies when we go to camp. Amen. We go to camp. We're screaming. We're happy. You go back home. Mom, can I have some tea? You know, it's kind of like that. I used to be a good screamer back in the day. But now I have, a, uh, I have to cut back. But the Bible says that Jesus was preaching. And the Bible says that as he was preaching in front of the church... There used to be a market. Now, let me tell you why there was a market in front of the church. Because back then, you needed to take a lamb or a dove so that you could make your sacrifice. And unfortunately for those people, they did not understand that it was more a matter of the heart than a matter of material. And it is so today that it is a matter of the heart and not a matter of the wallet or a matter of the check, or a matter of the tithe envelope, but it is a matter of the heart. And the Bible says that those people used to sell over there, and they used to tell you, you know, one lamb was worth uh, 10 pieces of silver, but they would say, you know what, for rush hour right now, we're going to be charging 15, 20 pieces of silver. So they would rip people off, and they would make business out of church. Something that I need to be very careful while I say this, but I need to still say it because it is God's word. We are not in the business of money, but we are in the business of saving souls. Amen? Amen. We are in the business of saving souls. One pastor used to say when I was younger, you know, salvation is free, but unfortunately to us, Ministry requires money. And we ask God to guide us in every financial decision that we make here on our church. And of course, in our conference and in our different churches throughout the valley. But, nevertheless, it is not about the money. But it is a matter of the heart. The Bible continues to say that those people used to sell and they used to offer, you know, 10 pieces of silver over here for one, one dove or, or 15 pieces of silver for one, one uh, 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 goat or for one lamb. And they used to be selling out there. And Jesus, the Bible says that he got on the steps and he began to preach. And he began to say things like this. You know me. And you know where I am from. 
Yet I have not come on my own, but the one who sent me is true. You don't know him. <gasps> I don't know him. What do you mean? But I'm coming to church because I know him. By the way, I'm reading from John 7. That's a couple of days before what he had preached. In other words, he was preaching something similar. The Bible says that he says, I know him because I am from him and he sent me. Hmm. And people began to look over there. Who sent you? Well, the one that sent me. Well, who is that? And he began to open. The Bible says that every time Jesus preached, he would open the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. You know, that is a wonderful thing. Every time we hear the word of God or we open the Holy Scriptures, we should see the kingdom of heaven open right before us. Because that is the whole deal of the gospel. Gospel means good news. The good news of what? Of Jesus. That Jesus came that we may be able to stay and be in eternity with him in the kingdom of heaven. That is the gospel. That is the gospel. And Jesus began preaching the gospel to everybody and everybody who was passing by. And the, and the crowd from the market began hearing, Míralo. What is he saying over there? What is going on over there? And you know, old adults, young adults, middle-aged adults, even teenagers, children began to draw near because the Bible says that whenever he would speak, everyone, a huge crowd, would gather. They wanted to hear. They even used to say, we have never heard such a thing be preached. They began saying, and the Bible says that he, that uh, uh, Sister White, I'm sorry, Sister White used to say that, pre that Jesus used to preach to the human nature. He appealed to the human nature. You know what is human nature? Curiosity. Why, 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 why are all the cops over there? I don't know, I'm going to drive slower. You know, we hear a sound, what's going on over there? You know, that's what it is, curiosity. You know, the story goes that one man in New York was working, you know, right in Middletown, Manhattan, Wall Street, you know. He was working, and, and the story goes that as he was looking for a drawer or for a file, crack, oh, my back, oh, man, ah, oh. <laughs> And he couldn't, you know, get back together because his muscles had tense and he now had his back and he was looking up. And the story goes that they finally sent him to the nurse and, and the nurse and the boss said the magic words, we will give you three days out of work. And he said, amen. Can you call my wife? And as they called his wife, he said, honey, I'm over here and I'm walking down the main street. Please look for me. I'll try to raise my hand as high as I can, but I am wearing my red shirt that you, that you ironed for me this morning. Yes, I'll be there in 15 minutes. And as he was walking down the steps and as he was looking up, somebody saw him and said, hey, why is he looking up? And they looked up. And people around began saying, hey, what's going on over there? And they looked up. Cars began to stop left and right because someone was looking up. And they would see pigeons. And they would see, you know, the man that was cleaning the windows. Why is everybody looking over here? You know? Because that is human nature. We are curious. And people wanted to know, why is that crowd over there? Who is that man that I can hear perfectly even though he's 200 meters away from me? What is going on and what is he preaching about? Jesus in his sermons, he would teach. He would appeal. He would correct. He would forgive. He would show you. And he would take you to salvation 
in every single message. He was preaching about the 144,000, salvation. He was preaching about Daniel 2, salvation. He was preaching about creation, salvation. Because that is the goal of the gospel, that we may always show the kingdom of Jesus just like Jesus did. So if you are giving a small Bible study, if you are found talking to a neighbor, if you are found talking to your children, never forget to give them the blessed hope that Jesus is coming again. Let's continue. Let's continue. The Bible says that as he was preaching the, 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 the gospel, as he was preaching the kingdom, all of these things came contrary to all the standards that everyone was accustomed to. Because everyone was saying, hey, but don't I need to go and take my lamb over there? Don't I need to, you know, only walk so many certain steps on the Sabbath? Don't I need to do this in order to be saved? Don't I need to do that in order to be saved? You know, it used to be in the Middle Ages that people used to pay huge sums of money for something that we know as indulgences. <laughs> Can you believe it? You would pay money for your dead relatives to go to heaven. And that is not the way we go to heaven. That is not the way. We know that we go by faith, by grace. And the Bible says that Jesus used to preach that. And that was a, a, a revolutionary way of thinking back in the day. So much that they say in verse 46 of chapter 7, we have never heard such a thing. We have never heard such a message. We had never heard the way this man preached because Jesus was preaching. Man, just to hear one of Jesus' sermons, you know, I used to think, I used to think that when Jesus preached, it would be like when Pastor Mendes preaches, you know, oh man, it's almost 12, I'm hungry, he got here late, his shirt is not iron, look at him, man. Come on, clock, walk faster. You know? I used to think that hearing Jesus would be Saturday morning, 11 o'clock, full day. But the Bible says that Jesus would preach from morning until evening and no one wanted to leave. <laughs> Can you believe that? Some of us get tired because I, I, I finish at 1230. Never mind. Let me continue. Let me continue. The Bible says that suddenly, suddenly, Jesus was preaching. Blessed are the ones and suddenly a big commotion. Hey, move out of the way. Move out of the way. And, and, and you know, just like, just like when, when, when uh, someone is preaching up here and we see a commotion, everybody just goes, you know, Shh. hey, they're preaching. And when everybody started looking to say, hey, sh they're preaching over here, they looked and <gasps> everybody go, <gasps> there we go. Okay, 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 praise the Lord. One man, one soul. The Bible says that everybody looked and they brought her. Everybody go. <gasps> there was a big commotion. People wanted to say stuff, but lo and behold, the ones that were making the commotion were the pastors. And everybody knows pastors get a free pass. <laughs> and now the pastors were bringing her. And everybody started saying, about time. About time they would clean the streets. About time they got this scum out of here. About time the pastors would grab those sinners and throw them out of church because everybody knows that church is only for saints. <laughs> Amen. 
She was the worst. She was going from party to party to party. She was going from left to right. You would find her one day on the street, the next day on the palace, the next day on the restaurant. You would find her in the arms of one man, in the arms of another man. You will find her jumping from bed to bed to bed. Everybody knew about her. Everyone knew about her. But nobody dared to say a thing. Everybody was just waiting. When is pastor going to tell him that he can't do this? When is pastor going to tell her that she is not allowed? The Bible says that as they were bringing her, you know, I, I, I can just picture it. Because they weren't bringing her, I meet up pobrecita, let's come this way. No, they were not bringing her like that. Come on, get over there, walk. And everybody was just saying, <laughs> they got you. <laughs> Spitting at her, screaming at her, looking at her about time, you know? She was caught. Right-handed, left-handed, right foot and left foot all in. Right in the act. She was naked. She was ashamed. She was beaten. She probably had some blood because of the hits, some bruises. She was crying. She was desperate. She wanted to hide in a corner and let the world eat her at this time because she had been caught. Do you remember being caught when you were little? Do you remember being caught taking or grabbing something that you were not supposed to grab? Do you remember that time that your mom told you to leave the cookies there because they were not for right now or they were not yours? And you were eating it and mom would say, what you got there? And you would say, nothing. And your mom said, yes, you do. And you said, no. You remember that? Well, multiply that times a thousand. She wanted to die. She didn't want anything else but the earth to eat her because she was now so ashamed because she was caught in the act. She was guilty. There was no way she could be freed. And let me remind you, back then, being guilty meant death. Being guilty, being caught, meant death. By the worst way possible, by the standards of those days, it was the worst. Those stones, you know, we, we remember those stones at the playground, they're about this big. No, stones to stone, they're, they're good. You need to make a hit. You need to make a dent. You know, the custom back then was to downgrade others, to try to upgrade yourself. That is not the case anymore. Amen. Amen. It is not well to downgrade others to try to make yourself feel good. It's not polite. And it is not what Jesus did. The Bible says that as they were bringing her, as they were trying to take her out to the to outside of the city so that they could stone her, they thought to themselves, hey, let's go and take this woman to Jesus. And if we can make him come contrary to our beliefs of our laws, we can finally get rid of that Jesus. So they took her to Jesus and they threw this sorry sinner at the feet of Jesus. 
Let me tell you something, my church. When life is falling apart, when you are, your family is trying to get rid of you, when your friends are abandoning you, when church is ready to disfellowship you, when everybody is giving up on you, there is no better place to be than at the feet of Jesus. Because that is the only place, <laughs> the only place where you're going to see a situation like this. The Bible says that very smartly they thought because, you know, there are some people that think they know more than Jesus. Jesus, can God make such a big object that he cannot move? You know, and they come and they ask that kind of stuff. I remember the first time they asked me that in summer camp. And I told, and I told that 14-year-old, you know, bro, let me give you a dare. When we get to heaven, you ask God, instead of middlemanning me, and we'll see how it goes for you. <laughs> and the Bible says that they came to Jesus and said, Jesus. The law of Moses says, you know, with, with declaration and everything, the law of Moses says that this such woman should be stoned. What do ye say? You know, because it was a uh, King James Version, you know. What do ye say? And the Bible says that Jesus saw the situation but never saw her because the sight of the righteous will always pierce and kill the sight of the guilty do you, do you have do you have do you have a dog that you know you're trying to get mad at canelo why did you do this you know, and they're just sitting there like they're trying to ignore you because they don't want to look at you because they know they did wrong. And when they look at you, they know they did it and they know they're guilty. And you're done with them and they just go and they just lay down next to the sofa forever because they're so sad because you are so mad at them. You know, when I was younger, I shouldn't be telling this story, but when I was younger, my mom gave birth to my little sister. She's about this high now, and she's 20 years old. Can you believe it? This story is 20 years old. And when my, my mom gave birth, she gave birth in December 28th. So by January, February, my, my dad and I began to go now to church. And my little sister and my mom, they would stay back home. And I would go by myself because my dad, you know, he was an elder, he was a deacon, he had to be in the platform. And in those days, or in that church, you know, when the pastor used to, uh, to, to preach, you know, the, the, the elders would still stay up here. So my dad was up here and I was over there. But, you know, I was over here minding my own business, uh, talking to a friend, telling some jokes or doing something. But let me tell you something about my dad. My dad didn't have to stand up. My dad didn't have to say a word because all he had to do was to do one thing. And his sight would shut my mouth, would get my hands together, and would sit me out straight with the promise of many things to come if I didn't do it. That is the sight of the righteous. The power of the righteous. What would Jesus do in this situation? The Bible says that as Jesus was trying to assess the situation, he knelt down. He probably took off his robe and, and gave it to her. And as he was down there already, he began writing against all the social pressure around him, Jesus began to write. Jesus, answer us, answer us. What do we do with her?
he began writing on the sand. He looked up and he said, whoever is free of sin, let him cast the first stone. <laughs> and you know, the older ones were saying to the young ones, okay, you're stronger, you begin. And the, old, and the younger ones were saying to the older ones, no, you're the wisest, you begin. You know, we need to know who we're talking about. These were the saint men of Israel. Those same people that came to John and they said, whoever is in need of a doctor needs a medic. When they came to Jesus, you remember. And they say, no, we don't need a doctor. We're fine. We're not sinners. The same people that came to John with that same story. No, no, we're fine. We don't need to be baptized. Those same sinless people began saying, okay, let me begin. And they saw what Jesus was writing and he said, Johnny, no offense, brother John. Johnny went last week and he grabbed from the offering plate when no one was looking. And Johnny sat there and said, I, I got to go. And Jesus went. Mark was going out with a girl who was not his wife at this hour. And Mark said, I got to go. And everybody said, Jesus is. It's about to tell on us. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. And they got out of there. They got out of there because they knew that they were not perfect. They knew that they were not sinless. And that they still needed forgiveness for their own sins. You know... The Bible says that still Jesus wrote and he began writing. And this is one of the few times that we see and we hear about Jesus writing. The other time that he wrote were two more times. One time when he was writing the Ten Commandments and that time he wrote in stone. The Bible says that my law endures forever. Another time he was writing because he, was, he, he needed to put a, 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 uh, a sentence on someone. And when the judge is putting a sentence on someone, it's because your whole trial has already come and gone. There is no coming back. There is no appeal because there is nothing that can be hid from Jesus. And Jesus already knew everything that man had done and everything that man would do. And he said, there is no changing in this man. So he cast out a sentence. And he wrote it on a wall. What are walls made out of? Not Chirac. They were made out of stone. This thick. And the Bible says that this time Jesus got to the ground. Have you ever played with mud? It's beautiful, wonderful. I miss those days. Too bad I grew up. I still have all my Hot Wheels in my wall. You'll see, you'll see. The Bible says that Jesus was writing on the ground. And praise the Lord because Jesus writes on the ground. Have you ever gone to South Padre? You try to write something so romantic and then two days later you go back, it's gone. Praise the Lord for Jesus. He writes on the sand. He writes on the ground because that can still be done away with. The Bible says that all the, all the people left until there was only Jesus and the woman. And at that time, they both had a personal time. And Jesus stood up and, and, and the woman was saying, okay, Jesus said, if, if anybody is sinless, may they cast the first stone. And she looked around and she only saw a bunch of rocks and the rock of ages was Jesus. 
And the Bible says that she saw Jesus and she said, okay, if the only one who is left here is Jesus, it means because he is actually sinless. In other words, he can cast the stone. Jesus, are you going to stone me? Are you going to stone me, Jesus? And the woman was waiting, waiting, waiting because only Jesus is there. And the Bible says that Jesus looked at her and said, Woman, neither do I condemn you. No one else condemned you because they're not worthy and I am worthy, but I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. My brothers and sisters, let me be quick about this because we still have communion. But this is our story. This is our song. We may have not done adultery, but we have done some stuff. And we have been caught. By who, you may say? Well, the Bible says that God is seeing everything. The Bible says that in, in, in the judgment, the books will be open. What books? The ones that are being written, written about you. You think autobiographies are bad? Man, that book is going to be a bestseller if it was my life. Because of all the things we have done. This is our story. Psalms 51.5 says that we were born in iniquity. We were born sinless, and since we were little, we want to sin, we want to do it. And not only when we were little, because we all think, oh, yes, the young, no, the adults as well. We all have our trials. We all have our tribulations. We all have the things we need to deal with, because we want to do it. Yet Jesus offers a do-over. Jesus offers an answer. Remember, the wages of sin are death. And we are all sinners. We all have sin, says Romans. We all have sin. Yet Jesus offers a do-over. Jesus offers a, a, a tablet of sand. Jesus offers to erase and to your sins. Jesus offers something else. That is why it says on Isaiah 118. Let, let's go to our scripture reading. Let us reason together, he says. You, you want to be free? Come to me, says Jesus. You want to actually do something? Come on. Let me, let me chat with you. Chat with me. I am available for you. Come to me. Call to me and I will answer, say Psalms. Let me reason with you. If your sins, that is what the Bible says. 118, the Bible says. Though your sins may be as scarlet, some people say that the worst colors to get rid of is red. And it is. Have you ever tried to get out a, a, a red stain? It's hard. Really, really hard. Though your sins are as scarlet, stubborn, hard to get out of, bad, not even bleach can get rid of it. Though your sins may be stubborn, bad, and wretched, they will be what? White as snow. We're from the valley. We don't know snow. We don't know snow. But imagine a nice vanilla ice cream cone. Beautiful, white, precious, and delicious. They will be what? White as snow. Though they be red as crimson, you know, there's something called palm grenades. And palm grenades are one of the most horrible things to try to get out of your clothes. Though they be red as crimson like the palm grenades, they will be like wool. Nice, blandito, suavecito, bonito. Amen. The Bible says on Ephesians 1 7. Ephesians 1 7, really quick. Ephesians 1 7 tells us, In him 
we have redemption through his blood for the forgiveness of our what? Of our trespasses. You know what trespassing is? When you see a sign that says do not enter yet you still go in? That is a trespass. And even though you knew you were not supposed to be in there, and you were caught in there, the Bible says he offers what? Forgiveness for your trespasses according to his riches in grace. He did it. He gave us that. It was not free though. Let me tell you about that. It was not free. Forgiveness is not free. He gave himself. He died in the cross. We all saw the video a couple of weeks ago, you know. God lost his son. He gave him that the train may go through the bridge. Amen. He gave it so that we could be now with a solution. That we may find life. That we may be able to walk right through it. He gave us an option. He gave us an escape route. Jesus did it by losing everything that we may have a chance. The Bible says, last Bible verse for, for, the, for the message. The Bible says in, in Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. That now he gave us that chance. And not only did he die, but he resurrected. Amen. And he resurrected and he was now preaching and he was telling his disciples and he was going around. And the Bible says that when he was saying to his disciples, I will be back. I will be back. And he left to heaven and now he's interceding for your sins and my sins. He is trying to do our judgment. So that whenever your name is called, whenever your role and your number is called in the heavenly court, uh, the, the, uh, the, the judge, God may say and open your file and say, okay, Joshua Judy, you were born in Bethlehem. Hmm. It says here that you were baptized by John. It says here. That you went into the desert. It says here that you healed the sick. The sick. You fed the hungry. <gasps> you were crucified. So that when he opens your file. It may say exactly the same thing. Amen. Amen. The Bible says. In Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. That now he is coming to us and he is calling to you. That you may accept and that you may come to him. The Bible says, Revelation 3 verse 20. Listen, I am here at the door of your heart. I am here in the door of your mind. I am here. That is why we hear songs and verses whenever we are doing something we're not supposed to. Huh? That is why sometimes we can't get rid of that hymn. Because he is at the door and he, what? Knocks. The Bible says, I am here and I am knocking. And I stand at the door. If anybody hears my voice, what? Open the door. Open the door. Don't let me standing out here. Open the door. And when you open the door, the Bible says, if you're hungry, I'll feed you. If you're thirsty, I'll give you to drink. And if you're lonely, I'll give you company for the rest of your life. Amen. The Bible says, I will go in there and I will dine with you and you will dine with me. My brothers and sisters, this is our story. This is our sacrifice. I was her. We were all her. We are all her, but by Jesus Christ, we will now become him.